want to show you how to use balance shims in a protector pad. And we'll start with a 30 inch contoured protector pad. I'll show you how the protector unit is designed, how the balance shim should be used. And before I get into that, I want to show you how the liner pad is put on and off. It's in there. You don't see it because it's cut like the outer pad. It's four millimeter soft polyester felt, slick surface. It doesn't get dirty too easy. It cleans well. Barrel racers tell me they put it up on a railing, pop it off the pad, spray it off, and it dries pretty quickly. They use it again. What I'm going to do is undo the Velcro. The Velcro hook folds toward the front and toward the rear. The loop is in the middle. You just fold it down. You pick your pad up, and you have the liner. The liner is not just a piece of felt. It's a piece of felt reinforced with a thin piece of vinyl. You can get the vinyl wet. This vinyl happens to be perforated for uh, marine use, and it's sewn to the corrector unit. Not the corrector unit, the liner pad. And then I sew the one inch elastic to that, front and rear, and to put it back on. It's easiest to lay it out, maybe on your pickup bed or whatever you have, and put the pad back on it the way it's shaped. And pop it up in the, from the center, the loop, take the hook, fold it up, put over it, Pop it up again from the center, take the loop that's on the outside, and attach it. And you have liner pad that's now part of the unit. When you're putting the balance shims in, you have balance shims for the front and the rear. This is the offside front balance shims, that being the side that's over there on the right. And they go in here to the shape of the pocket. This pad has leather reinforced, the protector does, center strip that holds it together. It's cut from one piece, but this reinforces it. So we've got leather reinforcing one piece of felt underneath the core, and then as well the eighth inch top layer. The eighth inch top layer is right here. It's what the balance shims go in and under. You have a layer then of nylon netting. There's no way you can see it here, but you can see the shields, the corrector shields that are inside of here. You can pick this up, look in there, and see that shield under the nylon netting. And we sew around the nylon netting to hold these shields in place. The way it's molded to the shape of a horse means that when you set it down and you push on the corners in front, it'll pop up because it's curved in its shape. The neat thing about these shields is if you have the old horse with a lot of wither and a hollow area, this will just, quote, kind of a bubble pop to bend, just like that, to fit in there relatively easily. When I designed these shields to go into the corrector unit, I started with a little space, little width at the ends, the outer edges, and I then made them wider. As these slots go in, they get wider. That takes material out right through the middle of this shield. That means that if you horse's shoulder is rotating, the body bending, it wants to bend right here. That's the flexible lever that sticks out in front of your saddle. That's what keeps your saddle from running into the shoulders and protects the shoulders at the same time. Front of saddle here. Place pad so label is just back of shoulder. Cover label with front of saddle. I'm not going to say what book that uh, might remind you of, but it helps for anybody in saddling because you can find your shoulder, you can put it right there, you can put your saddle right here, 
and that's going to be up over the shoulder. This three, three and a half inches will be up over the shoulder. That's where we want it. That's the only way you can protect the shoulder. And it's the only way you can keep a saddle off the shoulder. Now to put in the balance shims. Offside right here. This is a new pad. You'll notice this pad has no fleece on the bottom. You can buy the contoured protector pad with fleece. It comes with a thin layer like this four millimeter layer under the shields if you do and then a layer of fleece. The problem being with the fleece is that if you use the liner pad, you don't get the fleece wet, you'll have a hard time ever breaking in the fleece because it's not gonna get wet. So when you order it without the fleece, I put in a thicker layer of felt and uh, it's not horribly thick, on a contoured unit, I put in a 3 8 inch layer. On a roper unit, I put in a 7 16 inch layer. But it gives you all the protection you need when you add the 4 millimeter liner unit underneath. That's closer contact. It doesn't roll on the round back. And uh, it is uh, basically, I call it quick or no break in. Offside, 1, 2, and 3. I'm going to put them right in here where this pocket is. You notice I undid the elastic for the liner to do that. It lets me pick this area up to get in there easier. Stick them all the way forward and down. And they will stay there because everything's pushing this way. But it's stair-stepped for the saddle tree bar to run up and on it, just like so. Rear shims go in off rear, same way. On rear, same way. If it wasn't for on and off, you have to stop and scratch your head. Now we're going to hook the uh, liner pad back up. And your pad's a complete unit again. But there's more shins here than you need on most saddles and most horses. Those balance shims are balanced to you. The cut of this unit will it let it shape to the horse's back. So you notice that all of a sudden we're not a flat pad. We are a contoured pad. Because I made the first contoured pads in the industry. And what I did was took a contoured cut of a pad and left it open. That's called an elliptical cut, which you can see. By doing that, cutting forward in the rear, cutting back in the front, it lets the shields and the pad move in front and adapt to the shape of the horse. It lets it do the same in the rear. As the back comes up, when you get on, the back comes up three quarters of an inch to an inch. This pad simply straightens with the back as it comes up. It opens in the center. When the horse bends to the right, it closes on the right. As the back gets shorter and curved, but it stays open on the left because it's straighter on the left as they make that bend. This cut was patented with the corrector unit and the shields, because without this cut, the pad can be scooted all around, because pads don't like to stay in place under a saddle. They stay in place better with the shield, because pressure from the saddle tree is holding the shields down. Pressure from the shoulders is bending the shield up. It's caught in between. It can't go anywhere, really, to speak of. But this lets it keep, lets the pad stay in place with the horse more in the rear and the center and doesn't bind in the center like a excessively contoured pad will do when the horse's back comes up. So just a little information on the 30 inch, which is my most popular seller mainly because of the size of the contoured protector pad. I'll show you one that's on the website now. 
that hasn't been in the past and a long time ago I sold a whole lot of these to barrel racers. This is 28 inch. Much shorter for round skirted saddles than the 30 if you have a short saddle. Rule of thumb, five to six inches more pad than the length of your saddle skirt front to rear because you're going to have three inches at least sticking out front and you want an inch or two sticking out back. So if you have a 23 inch saddle, you got a 28 inch pad, you got three inches out front, two inches out back, it all works for the horse, works for you. You'll notice there's no shields in the rear of this. So this moves gently with the loins. Even where the rear shields are, they will bend gently with the loins because of that soft ladder effect that's in this rear shield. It's a little soft ladder but you don't bend it this direction because it's an arched shape here. The saddle tree bar bites in here when a horse bends and turns. It doesn't bite in any longer with this rear shield in the sensitive loin area. I hope you've gotten a little information about how to use the balance shims, how to put them in. Normally it only takes a couple of balance shims in front to balance most saddles when you put the tree behind the shoulders. All saddles drop too low in front the way they're made today. They don't once you pick it back up with the balance shims on top of the shields which work like a wedge under a rocking chair. The floor is the horse. The, shim, the, the shields and the shims are the rocking chair. The saddle's a rocking chair. The shims are the wedge in between the floor and a rocking chair. A little complicated. I'll get it straight here in a minute. Thank you very much, Lynn Brown. Hope you enjoy your new protector pad. Mm -hmm.